In 1996, Pokemon Red and Green first released for the Game Boy in Japan. They were so popular that later that same year, they released the same game again. And that one was so popular too that in 1998, they released the same game again. A few years later, the Game Boy got an upgrade to be the Game Boy Advance. Then in 2004, they released that same game again. Fast forward about 15 years later, we moved all the way on from the Game Boy line to the Nintendo Switch, and yeah, you know where I'm going with this one. Now, playing a lot of these older Pokemon games on official hardware is pretty difficult, especially with the 3DS eShop shutting down so soon. So, if you're new to Pokemon and want to play the original Kanto experience without making Nintendo mad at you, your best bet is to play Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee for the Nintendo Switch. You might also want this handy dandy strategy guide to help you get through the game, which isn't nearly as loud and colorful as the old red and blue guides, but it should still get the job done. So let's pretend like we're a brand new Pokemon player who's never played Pokemon before and see how effective this guide is at helping us hammer away through Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu. Starting off, I name ourselves C as usual and name our rival your rival because in the first few pages of the guide, it shows every important trainer and it just says your rival next to your rival. This intro part goes on to cover mostly what you would expect like Pokemon Evolution, version exclusives, the Kanto map, the controls, and more importantly, stickers and this cool bookmark. You can even take these stickers off and put them on the bookmark, kind of like a little badge case, which is kind of cool. Continuing along in the game, we meet Professor Oak, our starter Pikachu, and begin our journey on Route 1. The guide does recommend some Pokemon to you catch on each route, and in this case it says to catch an Oddish. Being that Let's Go is more focused on catching Pokemon in general, I start catching a decent bit of Pokemon to send back to Professor Oak for candy, which eventually leads us to the suspicious characters in Viridian City, where we also have to pick up a delivery for Professor Oak and fight our rival. We use the same type attack bonus, detailed more on page 123, for a quick win. On Route 22, we have an optional rival fight, but I do it anyway and catch a Nidoran male and Nidoran female as the guide suggests. This takes us to the Viridian Forest, where the guide explains catch combos, which are needed to catch a Bulbasaur in here. We can see more on page 117 about catch combos, and basically catching the same Pokemon over and over again increases our odds of finding a rarer Pokemon or even a shiny Pokemon. The guide does this a lot where it directs us to the back of the guide to find more information on a certain mechanic or area, which makes the intro part a lot less bloated in the front of the guide, but the back of the guide also has all these explanations, the Pokedex, the item list, the TM list, and strangely, it doesn't have a separate page for berries. Berries function a bit differently in this game than some previous Pokemon games, as there's no held items in this game, but they still deserve their own page at least. After completing the catch combo for Bulbasaur and making it to Pewter City, we hang out with this lady Slowpoke in preparation to fight Brock. The guide explains here how most gyms have some sort of task we need to complete to challenge them, and in this case we just need to have a grass or water type Pokemon on the team and we have Oddish. It then recommends that we use that Oddish we caught earlier with Absorb since Brock's Pokemon take 400% damage from grass and water type moves. After claiming our first gym badge, we meet the mysterious trainer who gives us three great balls, smells us, then directs us towards Route 3. Here we are introduced to coach trainers who are harder trainers with better rewards and we meet the Magikarp salesman outside of Mount Moon. The guide doesn't say not to buy the Magikarp like other strategy guides do for Kanto-based games, so I of course buy one and add it to the team, so we can evolve into a Gyarados later on. The section for Mount Moon is detailed with an easy to read map, leading us through the Fossil Maniac and into the fight against Team Rocket. This is a double battle and it says, remember that poison type Pokemon are strong against fighting types, and they can't be poisoned either. Which isn't exactly correct as that implies that poison is super active against fighting when in reality poison just resists fighting and isn't necessarily strong against fighting. We lay waste to Team Rocket's intrepid team anyway and make it to Route 4 where we do another catch combo for a Charmander and in the process Nidoran evolves into Nidorino. This takes us to Cerulean City where we get a free Bulbasaur, not sure why we even bother to catch combo one earlier then, trade a Rattata for an Alolan Rattata and teach Pikachu Zippy Zap. What a name for a move but it does come in handy for Misty's water type Pokemon Gym. The guide also recommends the Oddish we caught in Route 1 here, and I like that the guide keeps making callbacks to Pokemon they suggest we caught earlier. It did also recommend we caught a Ground-type Pokemon in Mount Moon, so let's see if it references that when we fight Lieutenant Surge later. For the battle against Misty, Zippy Zap makes this battle go by in, dare I say, a Zippy, allowing us to now explore up north with our second badge in hand. 
Here we have another rival fight where the guide recommends flying type moves for his Oddish, although we just got a Charmander so I don't know why it didn't directly recommend that either. It does still show the types Oddish is weak to under its image though, and Fire is one of them. And then the next task shows a trainer who just gives you a Charmander anyway. I don't get why they bother telling us to do the catch combos if we just get free Pokemon anyway. On our way to help Bill though, Bulbasaur evolves, we see this Nidorino standing up on two legs, and can head through Route 5 to catch a Growlithe, through the underground path where our Magikarp insists on walking in front of us, and then appear on Route 6 to catch an Abra. All this leads us into Vermilion City where we can trade our Geodude for a cooler Geodude and check out the SS Anne to have another rival fight and learn a special technique from the captain so we can chop down trees. This is convenient since there is a tree blocking the next gym ran by Lieutenant Surge. Before that though we meet Mina, the fairy type trainer from Sun and Moon. This is a random character to add into this game but I guess Sun and Moon were pretty new at the time so it isn't that out of the ordinary. Looking at Lieutenant Surge's levels, we are a bit underleveled somehow despite me battling nearly every trainer and catching a good amount of Pokemon. The guide even has the answer for the gym puzzle upside down which is funny since it used to be random in the older Kanto based games. I also taught Charmeleon Dig as the guide recommended which is nice since it also suggests fire type Pokemon for his Magnemite. The gym was a little hard because of the level gap, but it's still a let's go game at the end of the day, so even though Pikachu falls, our Gloom is able to take out his Raichu, giving us our third gym badge. We have a lot of traveling to do now, starting with Route 11, which really is just a bunch of trainers for us to fight and get EXP, the Diglett Cave, which surprisingly has a lot of Diglets, leading into Route 2 where we learn Light Up. Our rival, your rival, then appears and warps us over to Cerulean City to go across Routes 9 and 10, then into the rock tunnel which we need to light up with our new light up move. We have a map to follow here to make it a bit easier, and our Magikarp finally evolves into Gyarados here. The rock tunnel then leads into Lavender Town, home of the Pokemon Tower where we can get some free fancy clothes and fight our rival. The guide says to use the same strategy as we did before to defeat our rival, and it says that pretty much every time we fight our rival now. It then instructs us to climb the top of the tower until we can't anymore and get stopped by some ghost, so we can get some EXP. Then once the scary ghost kicks us out, we travel across the next two routes laying waste to any trainer in our way and make it over to Celadon City. There's a lot to do in Celadon City like trade for an Alolan Sandshrew, teach our Pikachu Floaty Fall for the Grass Type Gym, then fight either the Gym or the Team Rocket hideout in the game corner. The guide says we can do them in either order but it shows the Gym first in the guide so I just go there first. To get into the Gym we just have to show this girl a cute Pokemon. And for the gym battle, the guide says, unlike her Vile Plume and Weeping Bell, Erika's Tangla is only grass type, so poison type moves are super effective against it. But poison type moves won't be effective against her other two Pokemon, so use other super effective move types such as fire against the rest. If you've been raising that Charmander from Route 24 or caught a Growlithe or Vulpix, moves like Ember are a great choice, and remember, bring some antidotes in case your Pokemon get poisoned. Not sure why I didn't recommend we just use Floaty Fall on our starter Pokemon there since we just learned it in the Pokemon Center nearby, but we did hold on to that Charmander, which is now a Charmeleon, and we lay waste to Erika's team in two shakes of a lamb's tail, although Ember didn't do as much damage as I would have liked it to do. Now for the Team Rocket hider in the game corner, the guide has a map for us to follow leading up to the battle against Jesse, James, Archer, and then finally, Giovanni. Unlike Giovanni's flunkies, he doesn't favor poison type Pokemon. I end up using fighting type moves on Pikachu as it suggests, making this fight easier than the ones against Jesse and James and Archer. I remember in Fire Red and Leaf Green, Giovanni's Kangaskhan was pretty difficult, but not this time. We get the Sylph Scope as a reward now, which can finally allow us to go back to the Lavender Tower and see ghosts, and also help us return this Cubone that Team Rocket stole and have this really sad scene where the Cubone and the ghost, which is the dead Marowak mother of the Cubone, reunite before the Marowak disappears. This has got to be one of the saddest scenes in any Pokemon game, but no time to dwell on that, we have Pokemon battles to win. After reaching the top of the tower and saving Mr. Fuji, he gives us the Poke Flute which we can then use to wake up a Snorlax and catch the Snorlax, and now that it's not blocking the road anymore we can pass it and go through Cycling Road, which isn't Cycling Road anymore for some reason, battle a ton of trainers along the way, and arrive in Fuchsia City. Here we can trade a Marowak for an Alolan Marowak, get Sea Skim so we can now surf, and also check out the Go Complex, but we've never played Pokemon before, which also means we've never played Pokemon Go before either, so we can't exactly use it. 
The next big task here is to fight Koga, the poison type gym leader of this town, but it also says we can detour to the power plant, and since we're a little bit under leveled for Koga's Pokemon, I just go and do that. It would make more sense for us to go to Saffron City first, then level up there against the Team Rocket Grunts and the Sylph Co. But the guide doesn't say to do that right now, so instead I flip back to page 55 to see the power plant, then on page 55 it says to flip to page 77 to see more about the power plant. Here we can catch Zapdos, which is pretty cool. And in the process, Charmeleon evolves into Charizard, and I also evolve our Nidorino into a Nidoking with a Moonstone, as the guide recommended Ground-type Pokemon for Koga's Gym, and the Pokedex section at the back of the guide so we can evolve our Nidorino with a Moonstone that we found in Mount Moon. For the actual fight against Koga, it says to remember type matchups, as well as the same type attack bonus, and to bring antidotes for his Poison-type foes. We use our new Nidoking to take out his Weezing, Charizard on his Venomoth, Nidoking on his other Weezing, then Pikachu to take out his Golbat as its part flying type. The guide then shows routes 12 through 15 as optional, then wants us to visit Saffron City. Here we can get the Psychic TM, trade for an Alolan Raichu, and take on the Fighting Dojo where we can get a Hitmonchan or Hitmonlee as a reward, but we all know Hitmonchan is cooler. Now we can go into the Sylph Co, which really should have been done before Koga, but whatever. When we go inside, we meet Blue. For a special trainer, he only has an Executor and a Charizard when we fight him, both of which go down to Nidoking. After that, we can rush to the 5th floor to fight Archer or explore the Sylph Co a bit and fight some Grunts. I decide to explore a bit though, since there have been a few times where I felt a bit underleveled, like against Koga. Then eventually we find Archer and fight him with some help from our rival, your rival. We use Ground-type moves as suggested to get through him, then continue across the office building where we can get a Lapras and fight Jesse and James. These two never learn. We're an expert at handling their Poison-type Pokemon now with our Ground-type moves and can continue into the fight against Giovanni. We use Brick Break from our Pikachu on his Persian as the guide recommended, then go into Gyarados on his last two Pokemon which are both weak to water. I have to say, our team shaped up to be the most generic Gen 1 team I can think of as we have Pikachu, Venusaur, Gyarados, Charizard, Nidoking, and now Snorlax. That pretty much sums up all of the Team Rocket stuff for the story, we get a Master Ball as a reward here too, and now the last three gym badges can be obtained pretty quickly. Since we did such a great job thwarting those villains in Sylph Co, why not pick up an outfit worthy of an ally of justice by talking to the police officer on the northeastern side of Saffron City? I'm not sure why she gave us this pig costume, but we can wear it when we fight Sabrina. The guide says if we struggle, we can use Zapdos, and we also have a map to follow to get through her gym teleporters. It recommends Dark-type moves and Dark-type Pokemon like Alolan Raticate, but we don't have one, so I use Crunch on Gyarados as well as Snorlax since it recommended Snorlax with its high special defense which did work out here. We end up defeating Sabrina in two shakes of a lamb's tail and now it's time to head for the water. The water we're going to is on Route 19 south of Fuchsia City. Here we meet Jesse and James again who give us some gold teeth, what every Pokemon trainer wants, which we can return to the Warden in Fuchsia City so we can now use Strength and meet this cute little Diglett. Now we can surf along routes 19 and 20 and into the Seafoam Islands, which the guide says is all optional, but I end up doing it anyway. Here we have a guide to follow through the cave in the Seafloor and Cavern, leading all the way to the legendary Pokemon Articuno. I catch it to go along with our Zapdos, then head back into the water, which leads us to Cinnabar Island. There's a couple of things we can do here, like visit the Fossil Research Lab to revive our Kabuto, and check out the Pokemon Mansion. This place sure is creepy. The main reason we are here, or should I say, the key reason we are here, is to find the key to open the gym. Not really sure why the key is all the way in this abandoned building, but we have it now so we can head into the Cinnabar Gym to fight Blaine and his toasty Fire-type Pokemon. The gym puzzle here is to just answer some question that Blaine's asks us, and we have the answers to the questions upside down on the guide. And for Blaine's Fire-type Pokemon, we douse them with Water-type moves from Gyarados, and can also use Ground or Rock-type moves as well as any other Water Pokemon we may have caught on our way from the Seafoam Islands. After defeating Blaine, we can immediately head back to Viridian City, where we can learn more about Mega Evolution and get some Mega Stones for our Charizard and Venusaur. We also get one for Blastoise, but we never added a Squirtle to the team, so I don't have one. Now for the fight against Giovanni. The guide actually suggests we use Articuno here, so I add it to the team over Snorlax. 
Articuno can pretty much sweep his entire team with Ice Beam, although his Rhydon is doubly weak to Water and Grass, so bringing a Water or Grass type Pokemon would work well here too, and we have Gyarados and Venusaur if we ended up needing them, but we didn't. Then after our final showdown with Giovanni, we have to fight our rival before heading into the Victory Road. The guide suggests we use Articuno again here, however, our rival also has Electric type Pokemon, so recommends we teach something Earthquake, the TM we just got from Giovanni conveniently enough, and I teach it to our Nidoking to make it so we can defeat his intrepid team really quickly. Thought I was going to say two shakes of lamb's tail there, didn't you? As for the Victory Road, we have a full map to follow to make it pretty easy, some coach trainers to fight for some more EXP and TMs like the TM for Rock Slide, and of course a chance to catch Moltres. It's 400% weak to Rock, so we teach the Rock Slide to Nidoking which we just got, then immediately catch the Moltres, just in time for the Elite Four, although I don't end up using it on the team instead. And here's the team flashing by on the screen if you want to know what it is. It's pretty much the same team we're using for a little while, minus Norlax plus Articuno. First up is Lorelei, and the guide says Lorelei focuses on Ice-type Pokemon. Fire, Fighting, Rock, and Steel-type moves will deal super effective damage against Ice-type Pokemon, but remember, that may change for dual-type Pokemon such as Lapras. Many of Lorelei's Pokemon are Water-type too, Bringing a Pokemon with Grass or Electric moves will help you out. Remember to keep some Ice Heals on hand in case one of your Pokemon gets frozen. Being that a lot of her Pokemon are part Water, Pikachu shines really brightly here, and it also has Brick Break for her part Ice-type Pokemon, which is kind of convenient. Then against Bruno, it says Bruno loves Fighting-type Pokemon, but he uses Rock and Ground-type Pokemon too. Most of his team can be handled with a Pokemon that knows a strong Flying, Psychic, or Fairy-type move, such as Psychic or Dazzling Gleam both of which are TMs you should already have. We have Psychic, but I don't remember the guide telling us where to get Dazzling Gleam. Then for Onix, just make sure to have a Pokemon that knows a Water or Grass type move and it will take four times the damage. As for Agatha, it says Agatha loves Ghost type Pokemon, but all of her Pokemon share the Poison typing. So instead of focusing on Ghost type weaknesses, you could instead bring a Pokemon with a powerful Psychic or Ground type move. This is a great time to use Earthquake, which you recently got as a TM from your battle with Giovanni, to do some massive damage against this scary old lady's team. Then for Lance, it says, although Lance may be a Dragon Master, all of his Pokemon except Dragonite share a common weakness to Electric type moves, while all but Seedra are weak to Rock type moves. Thunderbolt and Rock Slide will be perfect choices for this battle, and we have Nidoking with Rock Slide to Pikachu with Thunderbolt, which is great. Dragonite is bested with a Fairy-type Pokemon, as Fairy-types are immune to Dragon-type moves. If you don't have one, though, any Pokemon that knows any Ice, Dragon, or Fairy-type move will work, and we also have Articuno, so this battle was pretty easy as well. And finally, we have the Champion. The last challenge before your Champion is your first friend and rival. Just like you've learned to do, your rival uses a very diverse team of Pokemon with no large shared weaknesses. Both his Jolteon or Raichu and his Rapidash are weak to Ground-type moves if you want to bust out Earthquake to knock them out easily. Try sending out a Pokemon that knows a strong Electric, Ice, or Rock-type move first, so I lead with Pikachu, as he'll always start the battle with his Pidgeot. It will Mega Evolve into Mega Pidgeot too, so beat it quickly before it deals any heavy damage to your team with its boosted special attack. He actually switched out his Mega Pidgeot into a Marowak on my Pikachu, which is pretty funny, and then I just switched into Gyarados on his Marowak, which was just immune to Marowak's ground-type moves. Remember all you've learned about type matchups on page 123? Don't be shy about using items or Mega Evolution, and you'll best your rival to go down in Kanto's history as a Pokemon League Champion. And with that, we became the champion of the Kanto region in Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. In short, the Elite Four and Champion weren't really too hard in terms of battling, as Let's Go is one of the easiest Pokemon games out there, but this was still a ton of fun to beat Let's Go Pikachu how Nintendo intended with this cool strategy guide. The guide itself was also one of the best guides we've ever looked at in one of these videos, as it had great maps for every area, plenty of information on what moves each Pokemon could learn, and it even recommended we catch certain specific Pokemon on many of the routes, and even use specific Pokemon in certain battles and certain moves, which I always like. I know that Pokemon is really meant to be played with whatever Pokemon you want and whatever moves you want, but seeing a guide that directly suggests a Pokemon here and there is still quite nice. We do still have quite a few Pokemon games and spin-off Pokemon games to play as Nintendo intended, or as Nintended, so be sure to let me know which game you want to see me tackle next in the comment section below. Also check out the playlist of all the videos we've done so far. And of course, consider subscribing so you don't miss out. Thanks for watching, and bye bye.